Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Are you ready for God's word? Are you ready for God's words? Oh, thank you, Sister Dami. Thank you for that. Amen. We are getting into the teaching. Faith and good works. I remember we were in the Wednesday service and you remembered what we shared on Wednesday. Are you sure you remember what we shared on Wednesday? We said that the, you know, we, we, we talked about faith and good works and we said that one of the major ways we function in good works is growing the church. Hallelujah. I mean, remember that. I mean, remember that church. And then we talked about different ways we can grow the church. I mean, remember that as well. Someone from, from over there, can you say, tell me one way we can grow the church from what you learned? Prayer. That's number one. Amen. Prayer. Say prayer. So, no spiritual activity. I'm already preaching faith and good works part three, but I'm just doing a recap. No spiritual activity actually can happen without a life of prayer. A life of what? Church, a life of what? Prayer. We pray. Who do we pray for? Tell me. We pray for? We pray for the saints. We pray for the local church, the saints. Yeah, who do we pray for? I guess. We pray for the minister of the gospel. Well, who else do we pray for? We pray for unbelievers. Yeah, we pray for ministers, right? Because this praying is what actually helps with the growth of the church. Amen and amen. What other thing do we say? What other thing do we say? Saints, what other thing do we say? We give. Amen. Okay, I think we are very distracted. Praise God. Praise God. All right, I want you to focus, focus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. What other thing did we say we do? The second thing we do? All right, okay. We, let's look. We reach out to the lost. One thing you would do as a believer is talking to somebody about Jesus. Say, I hear. Talking to somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Let your light shine. Let others meet the light through you christ is the light christ is in you share that light with other people yeah what else did we say all right someone is reading from their notes maybe <laughs> i didn't pick that by a word of knowledge or maybe i did all right the next thing we said is to be available if the local church will thrive you will be available available to serve and available to be served can we get a believing amen church can we get a believing amen Amen. What else did we say? Raise disciples. If the local church will grow, we would have to teach others the things that we have learned. So the local church for you is a place of learning and you pay attention. And that's why we write notes because the, great, the faintest ink is better than the greatest memory. That's why we write notes. Hallelujah. Praise God. The faintest ink is better than the best memory. Right? So we write notes. In writing notes, we pay attention as well. Because we know that the things that we are hearing, we are to tell other people. In telling other people, that's how we are faithful. Can we get a believing amen? 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 says, It is required in stewards that they should be faithful second corinthians second timothy 2 verse 2 now says the things that you learn commit to faithful men who are faithful men who will be able to do what teach others praise god church praise god so you must understand that the things that you're learning if you're a disciple you're a learner in learning then you and you know that this thing i'm learning I am to teach others. So you should have the heart of a disciple, the heart of a student, because you know I will teach other people. Let me say this to you to emphasize it. Don't go without teaching others. Listen, in teaching others, you become better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. In teaching other people, you actually become better. Look for an avenue to teach the things you've learned. 
Amen and amen. If you have nobody to teach at the moment, teach yourself. But look for somebody. Look for somebody to talk to about the gospel. Amen and amen. Raise disciples. Follow people up. That's what we're saying here. Follow people up. So, try to help saints eliminate the reasons why they will not be in church. Try to help saints eliminate why they will not understand. Someone called me up jokingly and said, you know, I really want to understand this gospel. But man, it's deep. I said, no, let's go on a one-year course. So that, you, yeah, one year every day. Take it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And he was a pastor of a church. I said, don't envy all oh, the grace of God upon your life. Believe the grace of God. Let's go on, the, on a journey. And that church is changed today because of the intentionality of it. Did it cost me time? Yes. But you have to ensure you're doing something about the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, ne the next time someone talks to you about the grace of God upon your life, ah, this is your... Don't worry. I'll teach you. You're changing people's lives. Raise disciples intentionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone said they cannot come to church. Look for a way to ensure that they are coming to church is easier. Amen and amen. You know, as a child, for example, if your child is not eating, you don't just say, well, oh, really? You don't feel like eating tomorrow. We'll try tomorrow. No, you look for every avenue to restore the, to the default settings. No, I can't come to church. Or oh, really, I don't want to pay attention to the word of God. You do everything to ensure that you have done everything you can to establish people, to raise disciples. You have to do, you have to do it. You would not hear God come and say, Oh, Mojan, my daughter. Oh, Mojan, my daughter. Right now, thou is out to do it, and then call us your friend is, and then uh, just so that we know God doesn't talk like that. Right? You know, it is that he believes you are a reader of the word. And he, the word of God is him talking to you. And he has already said that you should look for people to talk to the word of God about. So you do. Hallelujah. God's supernaturalness is in his written word. Write it down. That's why God said, if an angel comes to you, you know people say angel supernatural. I always tell people, the way I teach, don't think I don't have supernatural experiences. It's just that my supernatural experiences, I actually keep them rooted in the word. Any supernatural experience that is outside of the word of God, I don't even tell it. Any supernatural experience that is, that is you know, uh, that, you know, that no matter what the supernatural experience is, I put the word of God first. Amen and amen. So the word of God already says we should raise disciples. So stop waiting for God to talk to me. No, God has already said, talk to somebody about the things that you know. Can we get a believing amen? amen. All right. And we said the last one, the other one that Sister, Sister uh, Funke said, give to the local church. The local church runs on finances. Give to the local church. Your giving to the local church, number one, is proof that you believe in what's happening. It's fact that you are supporting the gospel to go out. Praise God. And it is the will of God. So you are intentional about giving to the local church. I was speaking to a friend, hallelujah, who were teaching about the gospel of grace. And then she said, well, now under grace, you know, until the Holy Spirit moves me specifically, I don't give. Because I'm now in the New Testament. I said, no, you don't understand the gospel. The word of God tells us what to do. Hallelujah. And the word of God already tells us that we should set aside. We should set. Someone says set aside. You are the one that will do it. I always tell you, spiritual maturity is in seeing the word of God as supernatural and acting upon it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if Jesus appears to you, he won't see anything outside of this. It might just be a little more specific to you. Jesus is the word. I mean, if Jesus comes to you and says something outside of this, it wasn't Jesus. Amen. You know, people don't see it that way. This thing we call the Bible is, the, is Jesus. Je that's why Jesus did not even in his earthly walk, he didn't quote outside his book. Every word Jesus said, he took it from the things that were said before he came. That's why Jesus was very heavy in the quoting of Moses. Everything that Jesus said, over 70% of them, Moses said it. The remaining 30, the, the remaining 30, the prophets, and majorly Isaiah. If Jesus appeared to you as a human being, this is what he will say, the words. 
So the, that's why the word of God is the highest revelation of God. And so what we do with this is that we obey what he says. Can we get a believing amen? So he says set apart. So just do. Hallelujah. Just do it. Why? That's what the scripture says. Amen. What else did we say? How to grow your, your local church? We said walk in, your, in the secular part of your life. Because if you don't walk in the secular part of your life, they would affect the gospel. How many you know that everything about your life has the tendency to affect the gospel? Right? Did you, did, you, did, did you hear what I just said? You know, if you do not manage your health and you eat anyhow, you behave anyhow, and you fall sick, can you preach the gospel? So you have to manage your health. Say that's wisdom. I'm talking about, the, so the wisdom part, because the moment you are not around in church, you're not around in church, and it's from a health point of view, of you abusing your body, that's a problem. Follow God's word, secular issues in your marriage. How many people know that if I'm fighting my wife every day, I won't have time to write all of these notes? How many people know that I won't have time to write books? Hallelujah. I mean, you need to know that your marriage is important. I am not saying there are not people that are struggling in their marriage. I'm just saying that to the best that you can. Are you hearing me? Church, are you hearing me? That's why as a believer, even when you are single, who you marry is going to affect millions of people. You must understand it. It's more than flowers and rose. Selah. It, it affects millions of people. If you don't do it well, your wedding day can be the end of your ministry. It's a fact. It's a fact. Why? Because through the activities and your wedding day can be the initiation into a combination that the devil's already said. You know, there's a booze marriages that the devil's already is like news flash in hell. Hey, they finally got married. Oh my god. Why now? Because that union will trouble. To trouble the works of darkness, thousands will be saved, local churches will be born, many will be discipled because of these two people. And you must know it. Manage the circulars, they're important. Manage your finances, don't get into debt. How many people know that if you are 100,000 pounds in debt now, you know, as I'm talking to you, to be because you know that as you are leaving the church, loan shark is waiting for you at home. You are dodging TV license people. You are because you are your, your finances is in a wreck. Manage your finances. If you don't, it will affect the gospel. The sac that's why the circular parts of your life, they matter. Not that it matters to God, but because you are in the world. And it will affect how you do. So it matters. The circular things in your life, the circulars. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Like we've shared last, last month, Man, your career, what you're doing for work, where, where you are, you are a light, a shining light. It's good. It's good that way. That where you are, you're an example. Amen and amen. You're an example. The way you shine your light in your workplace is to be an example of integrity, honesty, consistency, faithfulness, hard work, excellence. Christian. Hallelujah. It's not I'm under grace. You go late to work. No. These things affect the gospel. Manage your secular life. It's important. Because it, you need to understand that the center of your life is Jesus. And anything that will affect that center is important. That's why every part of your life is important. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. I don't know if many of you know the great woman of God, Catherine Kuhlman. I'm not saying this to slag her off. One of the most anointed women that walked the face of the earth. The marriage was the problem. As I mean as anointed as she was. That was the problem. These things matter. It's not just I'm oh, all... It matters. So manage it. Manage it. Manage it. In making decisions, take your time. Where knowledge fails, apply patience. Patience will reveal deceptions. There is no need to be in a hurry. I don't buy a house in a hurry. I don't buy a car in a hurry. I can't marry in a hurry, sir. Hallelujah. No, you don't have to. Take your time. With one, somebody you'll be at home with forever. Sister Sarah, forever. You wake up, he's there. 
you sleep is there forever you take your time convinced that this is where i'm going to hmm. all right and the last one be submissive to authority in the local church praise god there are, if there are instructions you'll be given as a local church is not given to everybody in the world it's given to you as a local church right because you know you are a local church it's still from the word of god if you look at the book of revelation for example those were different local churches and it was different instructions to the different local churches very important there are some things in your local church that they will have you do it's from the word of god right it's not the one of the, uh, your local church they're telling you to eat grass no it is from the word of god right but it is specific to you in that season those things help in the growth in the local church praise god praise god let's get into god's word let's get into god's word more intentionally now galatians chapter 2 faith and good works we start off in verse 16 galatians 2 verse 16 let's pay attention look at verse 16 it says knowing that verse 16 it says knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the church are you there knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by faith of jesus christ how many people there saw lock um, works of the law did you see works of the law there now notice it says works of the law not old testament amen church amen the works of the law are the things that were instructed for the people of israel to do to be right before god can we get a can we get a believing amen he's now saying all of those things that they were doing will never make a man right before god but what makes a man right before god faith in what faith in christ jesus look at verse 16 even we have believed in jesus christ that we might be justified by by the faith of christ what did we do we believed on the gospel and we were justified by faith in christ just not by the works of the law not by the works of the law saints say not by the works of the law say not by the works of the law why because the these saints these the guys in israel they thought that through the things they did they were right before god so they were very proud people and moses gave them a long list of things to do moses the preacher the prophet he gave them list of a long things to do so they thought those things doing them will make them right now we see from scriptures that the bible says the works doesn't make men righteous but it is faith in christ jesus hallelujah look at verse 17 he says but if while we seek to be justified by christ we ourselves also have found sinners is therefore christ the minister of sin god forbid stop did you notice something there this man is saying if we are now new creations and we believe the gospel does it mean now that we believe the gospel and then we can live anyhow what did he say god forbid what did he say god that's not what he's saying there what did he now say he said no for if i build again the things which i have destroyed this man is trying to tell the people in galatia that the way you will go back to living in sin is going back to living under the law is having a mindset that you need to do something so that god can you can be right in god's sight he says that is the root and foundation to living a life of sin hallelujah look let look at the next verse for i through the law am dead to the law that i might live unto god if you read in the nlt if you read in the nlt it says i it says for i through the law i'm dead to the law he says the law condemned me nlt tells you that what did the, what did the law do in his reading how many people have read the law before you've read the law the, okay let me did many many things to do under the law how many people have seen it before do this do this do this and you come up with the fact that ha ah. you know there was a time i was ministering to somebody who felt that they were righteous and they didn't need jesus i do this i do this, i do like this and i said i now gave them some things in the law and I said, do you do this? The person said, no. And I went to James 2 verse 10. And I said, do you know if you have broken one law, you've broken all the laws? And I said, do you know by virtue of that, no matter how good you are, you are still wrong? The person said, ah, I didn't know. 
the man was able to receive the righteousness that is by faith. Why? The law by its nature condemns. Hallelujah. The, one of the essence of giving the law was to help the man know that he could not be righteous by it. Hallelujah. It's just like, for example, now I, tell, I, I want to catch Sister Sarah. She doesn't know I want to catch her. And I said, Sister Sarah, I bought you a brand new plane. Fly us to Toronto. I actually want to kill her, but she doesn't know. Instead of Sister Sarah to say, no, I cannot fly you to Toronto, sir. Let us get a pilot. What does Sister Sarah do? She enters the cockpit or the, the and she starts to, to, to move the gear and starts to try to fly. You know me, I'll not be in the plane, right? I don't know that I'll not be in the plane because, <laughs> because I was, I'm trying to catch her. I won't be in the plane. That's why Moses, though he gave the laws, he never practiced one. Moses was never under the law. Have you not noticed? And he made them know, I'm not under the law with you. Moses told them that if you go into that place without blood, you will die. After he says that in the evening, he will just throw to the place. And then the cloud of glory will come. And be, the, Bible, the Bible says he will be talking to God as to face to face. He was not under the law. But he gave it to them. The essence of Moses giving them the law was for them to raise up their hands and say, I can't do it. But what did the silly unbelievers do? I will go and try. I will try to show. So when, for example, we give Sarah the aeroplane. And instead of her to quickly tell us, I can't do it. She now goes into the aeroplane and he moves a little. She now starts to say, wow, I'm a pilot. Who is fooling who? <laughs> it moves a little that's what they were doing they would do some part of it and they say wow we're righteous why because through right through the works of a man he can never be right hallelujah Chod, hallelujah okay then we go into galatians chapter 20 where which we talked that up last week he says i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but Christ that lives in me. Say Christ lives in me. The life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Say I'm a believer. Because I believe the unbelievable. I believe that God became a man. He died. He came out of the grave. He lives in me. Do you see how big of a believer you are? You believe something scandalous that is above the mind. You know the mind is not wired to believe how you believe let me tell you what to believe again say i believe that god became a man uh, let me stop a little to tell you you don't have a faith problem let me tell you what you believe so you see how big of a believer you are say i believe that god became a man he god lived as a man god died as a man god was raised up as a man God now lives in me today. That's what I believe. That is insane. But it shows how big of a believer you are. Meaning what you believe does not have to be logical. Hallelujah. Because that's how you were initiated into this kingdom. What we told you to believe from the beginning does, does not make sense. Hallelujah. So with the gospel, you are not looking for logic. You are just looking for the fact that he said it. Can I get a believing amen? You know, if God tells me today that I'm 60 years old, you know I'll believe. That's what it means to be a believer. I won't say, ah, no, no, I, I, I know my birthday. Look at my bed. No. You say, yes, I believe. That's how you respond to God's word. You don't respond to God's word with logic. The you know, the moment God tells me that I'm the king of England, you know I become the king. People don't understand what we are talking about. We're talking about faith here. Faith and good works. And we're talking about the word of God. We're talking about... I am telling you that it's okay for God to talk to you like that because you have already believed something absolutely insane. So you're a big time believer. Can we get a believing amen? Can we get a believing amen? So he says here, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Say God loved me. Did you notice that God's love for you is, is like it's in the past tense? God, every time he talks about the love of God, it's in the past tense. For God so loved the world. God commended, commended, past tense, his love for us. 
God who loved me and gave himself for me. Why? Is it that God doesn't love you today presently? No. It's just that God's love for you is a finished work. Hallelujah. It's ended before you started. So nothing can change. That is why it's a carnal believer that says, if God, if you love me, do this for me. No. The believer says, I have believed his love. Say, I have believed. I have believed. Say, I have believed. I have believed his love for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at verse 21. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by doing things, then Christ died in... Can I frustrate the grace of God? Right, that's when I try to think I can do things to be right with him. You are acting like Jesus didn't die. Tell your neighbor Jesus died for you. He came out of the grave for you. You are one with him. That was the problem with the church in Galatia. Look at Galatians 3 verse 1. That's why it starts off with, oh foolish Galatians. Now, I'm about to say something here because I've been going. This is where I've been going since. Oh, foolish Galatians. He says, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Who has be- bewitched you? He says, before I preach to you, this church is Paul's church. Paul started a church. He touched them and moved on to start another one. And he heard that the church he started, this church was going through a lot of persecution. This is one of the churches that Peter wrote to at some point. Were they going through persecutions? Yes. But persecutions actually show you what you really believe. You, we will show you how at some point Peter had to write to the Galatian church because they were going through persecution. Because of what they were going through, they went back under the law. Let me say something to you. One of the things about trials is that it shows you what you really believe. Amen. Church, amen. And we'll get there very soon. We'll get there very soon. He says, he says, what bewitched you? Have you forgotten? I was the one that preached Jesus Christ to you. Evidently as crucified. Look at verse 2. He says, and this is why, where I want you to start paying attention. If you were not paying attention. He says, this only I would learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit. Say, receive ye the Spirit. Say, receive ye the Spirit. He said, did you receive the spirit? Did you get born again by the works of the law? I, I, I want to share something with you here. He says, no. He said, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the, by the what? Hearing of, hearing of faith. This is very crucial. He says, did you receive the spirit? That that we call the spirit. How did you receive it? You received it when someone spoke the word to you. The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. That the greatest miracle ever. What do you think will bet any miracle? Even today. The hearing of faith. Say the hearing of faith. Church, say the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith brought the miracle of a man being spiritually dead and being born again. He says, think about it. How can you go back under the law? Do you not know that it was the hearing of faith that got you saved? I know you are all saved. Let me show you another one. He now says it here. Look at it. He says, verse 3, are you so foolish? Put hearing of faith in your mind. He says, you haven't begun in the spirit. Are you so foolish you are made perfect in the flesh? He said, how can it be that you heard the gospel and he gave you the spirit? And you think you can live in the spirit by works. Are you following? It is how you heard. It's how you heard. the. How you believed on the gospel. Is how you will live in the gospel. Is what he's saying. Look at verse 5. You know. I turn up this way. When, I'm ha- when I want to have miracle meetings. I'm going to tell you. How I do it. This, I turn up this way. When I'm about to share with you. When I just want to start getting people healed. Because God tells us. Hallelujah. Galatians 3 verse 5. It says, He that ministered to you the Spirit and does what? Walk at what? Walk at what? What happens before miracles start to happen? Stop first. He says, He that ministered to you the Spirit and walk at miracles amongst you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? 
It says the hearing of faith. So when miracles, why do you want to have a miracle meeting? When it says, how do miracles happen? Miracles happen when people hear the right things. When they hear the right things, they believe the right thing. You know, for example, now, if they just told me, gave me a memo, right, right, Pastor Dio, you're walking into a service, we just want you to do miracles. We just want you to walk miracles and get people healed. You know, when I get into that meeting, you know what I start to do? I start to tell them things about the healing power of God. Can I get a believing amen? Because it's the hearing of it that would bring a miracle. I started to tell them how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all. And you know, when I go to those meetings with my wife, I get the sense to shout, all, oh, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And I'll tell people that, are you part of all? They say, yes. Are you part of all? Yes. What is happening? They are hearing. Jesus Christ died. He came out of the grave. He gave us that spirit. That same spirit that went about with Jesus, healing all that was oppressed of the devil, he's here today and he's ready for all. As I'm saying that, the person that is crippled in his body is already ready to receive. Because he's now hearing something. He's hearing something. Because it's the hearing that they hear that makes something happen. Can we get a believing amen? He says, it is the hearing of faith. The hearing. Hallelujah. 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 The hearing of faith. Hearing what Jesus has done. Hearing what he has given. That he has given the spirit. That the spirit is power. That the spirit is here. That the spirit is a lover. That the spirit wants to heal now. That the spirit is more interested. I remember there was a particular lady many years ago. I think it's 13 or 14 years ago. They brought her to me in a meeting. They said to me in that meeting. Everybody we know that is a big man of God. Has laid hands on this lady to speak in tongues. And she has not spoken in tongues. I knew that it was the hearing of faith. When they tell you that everybody that can be has laid hands on somebody and the person is not speaking in tongues, don't go and lay hands. Who you? <laughs> don't lay hands. Just say, ah, no, 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 no. I'm coming fresh. Nature fresh by Papa God. I was released. This is my 14 day out. No, forget. It's the hearing of faith. So I said to tell the person, wow. When I said, ah, what, what happened? I said, wow, wow, wow. I said, ah, sir. I said glory. He said, everybody has laid hands on you. You want to add me to the number so you go to the next minister. Never. I didn't tell her that, but that was my heart. I said, glory to God. She was like, sir, what's going on? I said, I see something. She said, tell me, Papa. I said, we are there. I said, see glory. She said, sir, we are all over you. I said, sir, you don't, you, are you seeing glory? I said, my God, the Holy Spirit has engulfed you. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, the girl was not looking. <laughs> I said, No, 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 my God, my God, my God, my God, this power that came is all upon you. You know, with she, you want to bring drama, I bring dramatic. <laughs> said, you don't mean it. I said, Lift up your hands, this glory is too much. It's too much for Jesus is in you right now, he's on the inside of you. You might not feel it, I am feeling it because it's that big, it's coming up. She doesn't like this. If, if, if it's inside me, rather, da, ba, 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 so it's not it. the hearing of faith. I removed everything that will make her think it's not for me. Or that everybody else can have it, but not me. I didn't even have time to tell her maybe the sin that she sinned. Or the this that no, the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. 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 You know, sometimes when, <laughs> when, I want to minister to somebody. Let me just show you the hearing of faith. I just do this. And the person is not a is a believer, but has gone through many, many experiences. I tell the person that introduces me to the person to say these few things. Tell I always tell the person, tell that person that when Christ came out of the grave, he lives in us. But that person that is going to call you to minister to you is someone that is manifesting that power in a very strange capacity. When he calls you, you'll be healed. Hearing of... Okay, but let's continue. How did we get saved? The hearing of faith. We are in Galatians 3 verse 5. It says, he that doeth miracles is by the hearing of faith. Let's go to James chapter 1. That is the book of faith. James chapter 1. The book of faith. 
the book of the life of faith james chapter one remember the things i told you the hearing of faith. okay so for example if i'm going through a tough time and it feels like my faith is whatever my faith is feeling like what do i need the hearing of go and get something to hear james chapter one verse two let's move on to something else we'll talk about we're still going there anyway james chapter one look at verse two my church my i remember remember last week when i told you that faith is a lifestyle faith is a what lifestyle so my brethren meaning people that are born of the same father as me what did he say there count it all church count it all please i want you to follow me today count it all count it all joy you know let me help you a little the greek word count is the word hegemoi hegemoi means to make the leader to make the governor to make the person in front stop count it all joy so make joy the leader make joy to be the one i mean when james was writing this that's why we read the greek to know that make make joy the leader make joy the governor make joy the superintendent stop what are you doing the life of faith what do we use joy to do the life of faith when count it all joy when you are going through divers temptation say divers temptation what is the first thing i do say i'm learning the life of faith just say i'm learning the life of faith say my default response my default response to trials is joy oh god did you hear me i said my default response to trial is joy i'm a man of faith i'm a man of the words my default response to trials is joy let me tell you now peter wrote to the galatian church first peter let's see there let me show you something first peter first peter is just after james first peter chapter one Mm, 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 mm. look at verse six where look at verse one so you know that i was writing to the church in galatia peter an apostle of jesus christ to the strangers scattered in pontius galatia this message was to the church in galatia that was going through a lot of trials because they believed the gospel right okay then we move to verse six it says wherein ye rejoice first peter 1 verse 6 wherein we rejoice greatly how do we rejoice church how do we rejoice don't now for a season if ye need if need be ye are in heaviness through what manifold temptations that word manifold there is the word many sided many colors various kinds just like the robe of joseph various kinds of colors it is it says here that you guys are going through different kinds of temptation you know tells them that they should rejoice let me say something about the christian faith the first response the christian that is taught has to trials is rejoice say pastor dial say pastor dial say pastor dial that's not what my mind wants to do yes i know say i'm a man of faith i'm a doer of the words i do what the word says you know i was teaching in a meeting and i and i and i i i shared this scripture and somebody walked out of the meeting i don't like those people they are too proud they are not real how can he say that i should rejoice when i'm going through something you know it's quite interesting how we talk when we think it's the pastor that spoke did you get what i just said now that's what the scripture says do you get it it says am i a human being too yes but the life in christ is not a life of opinions it's a life of submission and as you practice it you get better can we get a believing amen and it's the life of faith it says count it out joy so you must learn it as a practice that word counted out joy change it to the real word 
Hegemoi, make joy your leader. Make joy your governor. Let joy go before. Hallelujah. What are we used to doing from where we come from? We love to complain. Where do we really come from? Zion. What do we do in Zion? We rejoice. We count this all joy. We actually do. We are, it's not about hypocrisy. Now, I'm trying to tell you that as a Christian, this is your default response. You must know it. Say, I'm a Christian. Church, I'm a Christian. I count it all joy. So I count it all joy. You know, these guys that we are talking about here, that we are saying they went through persecution, these were guys that were, they were stoned for the gospel. They, be, they were bearded for the gospel. Right? These guys, people will not buy and sell with them. They were poor for the gospel's sake. These guys that we are writing to. You know, sometimes when we think about what they went through and what we are going through, it looks like a walk in the park. Can we get a believe in amen? Amen, 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 amen. These guys were actually going through stuff, big deal stuff that has to do with their lives. Meaning, the accepting of Christ is almost a death sentence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they were going through things, and many of them did not have jobs because they were disenfranchised from the system and the society. Many of them were beaten and battered. What did the Bible say they should do? Church, what did the Bible say they should do? First, count it all joy. Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear. Let me tell you, you will practice it. You will practice it. You have to practice it. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Why do we count it all joy? Look at verse 3. Knowing. The Greek word knowing there is the word ginosko. I know a lot of us are used in this church to hear about epignosis, which is the precise and accurate knowledge of God. Right? But this one here is ginosko. Ginosko is another kind of knowledge. Ginosko is personal and intimate knowledge that comes from experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is experiential knowledge. It says here, so it's not trying to say, knowing I, we have personal experience on this matter. We have intimate experience on this matter. We know that, what do we know? The word trial of our faith. The trial of our, the trial of our, the trial of our faith. So if you're a person of faith, Will your faith be tried? Church, will your faith be tried? It will be John 16, 33 tells you in this world, ye shall have tribulations. So Christianity is not actually teaching you or telling you you would avoid tribulations. In fact, Christianity when taught you well, shows you how to conduct yourself in the tribulations. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. So he says, we have personal experience, intimate experience on this matter. It says, for the trial of your faith works what? Patience. There is something that tribulations does to the believer who is holding on to God. It develops his character. Listen, when you're going through a trial and you count it all joy and you put on your mind what God has done in the midst of the trial, it, it develops your character. How many people have gone through a trial? You came out at the other side, and then you realize that it strengthened your faith. How many people have, I've heard many people say, I went through a particular trial. I think it was Sister Dami that just talked about it and said, I prayed like I've never prayed before. How many people heard that, heard, heard, you heard that say it? I prayed for four hours. I, it says the trial of your faith, it will work what? Patience, character. It's a fruit of the Spirit. That's something that, so when I go through a trial, is either I develop a fruit of the Spirit or I get cast down. Did you get my point? Chuck, did you get my point? It's either I, I stay on. You know, sometimes we go through trials and we just say, you know what? Because of what I'm going through, God, if you love me, how would you allow me go through this kind of thing? How many people have said that before at some point in their lives before? Uh huh. But now you're hearing the gospel and you have come to realize that God loved you already. But the trial of your faith, it's faith. It will be tried. It's not God trying it. 
Say it's not God that is trying me. God does not test his children. Hey, talk to me. God doesn't test his children. He does not give them tribulations. How many people have children, nieces, uh, any of those things here? Do you do evil to them to just see how they will respond? You think, ah, this is my cousin. I really want to see how he fears in life. As he's walking to school, I'll just hit him with my car. I just want to see how he will... I just want to test him. Will he beat me up? You know, you don't think or talk like that or act like that. If you think God thinks or talks or acts or behaves like that, it shows that you are better than God. Hallelujah. The things that God, you will not do because you're a nice person. Stop reckoning it to God. You are being proud. You are saying you are better than him. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. He says, let patience have his perfect work. Meaning, the saints that develop this thing called patience. Nothing can move him. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. He says, but let patience have a perfect work. That you may be what? Perfect. I mean, James chapter 1, verse 4. That you may be what? Perfect. That word there is the word complete. Entire. Wanting nothing. The man that trials and tribulation doesn't shake, but he counts it all joy, holds on to the word, holds on to fellowship. He says that one is complete, thorough, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. 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 A character trait. Amen and amen. Now look at verse 5. If any man lacks wisdom if i wanted to put this in context what will it really be if any man lacks wisdom in the midst of trials hallelujah so even if now let me let me now say it if i was not in a trial and i needed wisdom can i ask god church can i ask god yes you see take god as it were as it, uh, uh, take god at his word say i can ask god about things I can see listen saints say I can ask God about things I can ask God about things if I need wisdom I can ask God God will answer you either you either show you something send people to you but God is gonna answer don't act like you are a widow or an orphan rather your God is your husband and God is your father don't act like that you are not like everybody. You actually can ask God stuff. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. You know, there's a particular point in time. You know, like this was 2013. Someone did something to myself and my wife. We're looking. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I said, you know, I just need to ask God who is it and he will tell, who the person is and he will tell me. You can ask God about things. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. And then I asked the Lord, just, you know, to pacify everybody. I asked the Lord, and he showed us the person. It was very, very strange. The person was very, very close to us. That did evil to us. You can ask God about things. Christianity is real. If anyone, I want you to hear this. Hear it. Verse 5 of James, chapter 1. Don't forget it. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. Do you know what that actually means? Do you really know what that means? Oh, I can never be stranded in my life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you. It's not as if I'm not, get, I'm not going to get into positions of being stranded. But the Lord is with me. I can ask him. I can ask him. And never think that God doesn't care about you. Can we get a believing amen? amen? You know, it is when we worry, we are voicing that we don't believe god cares for us worry is a proof that you don't actually have it settled that god cares for you first peter chapter 5 you must be absolutely sure about god's care for you absolutely i was leaving the church in 2008 i was leaving a church i'd been with them for one year i was coming to another country and they said, oh, you are leaving all of this behind. And you're going to another country to start afresh. You know nobody there. You know nothing over there. 
What's going to happen to you? I said, I've never been to the country before. I don't know anybody there. I'm not even going with money of my own. But God is with me and he's the future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must be radically sure that God cares for you. Christianity is not tilled by moonlight. He actually does. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter. Even through trials, does he care? Yes, he does. In fact, that's what the devil wants you to believe that he doesn't. First Peter chapter 5. Look at verse, look at verse 5, chapter 5. Look at verse 7. Church, look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Casting how many? Church, casting how many? Church, casting how many? All of your? All of your? All of your? Cares upon? Why? I want you to, this week, what I want you to do is keep repeating to yourself that God cares for you. God cares for me. God cares for me. Look at it. It says it. Casting all your care upon him. Why do I cast all my cares? For he cares for me. Watch fully and affectionately amplified. When we remember this, we will not be given to worry. Let me say it again. Casting how many? Church, casting how many? This teaching I'm teaching is very important because one of the things that saints do the most after salvation is worry. That is why you should be paying attention. It's worry. One of the things that saints do the most, they worry about tomorrow, they worry about today, they worry about anything that is important. Why? It's because they are not sure that God really cares. That's why we are drumming it to you. God actually cares for you. God doesn't care about material things. God doesn't care about anything in this world. God cares about you. The reason why all of those things matter is because he cares about you. And you have something to do with them. God is not in time. You know the things that Mojan, in 2004, did you have a mobile phone? You had a mobile phone. You know, that mobile phone at that time, I don't know the one you had. You, okay, you didn't, okay, you didn't have a mobile phone. Okay, who? I know you had a mobile phone. In 2004, did you have a mobile phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was most likely Nokia 3310. And when that phone came out and she bought it, or before she bought it, she would have been believing God or really wanting it because it was expensive. My own story, I didn't get 3310. The first phone I got from my parents was Nokia 3210. They came to the United Kingdom and bought it. And they bought it and gave it to me. They gave it to me like, a, like if you lose it, don't come back home. At that time, it was a big deal. At that time, it was expensive. At that time, I was the only one in my university using that kind of phone. Material, let me tell you why material things, you just need to be careful of it and understand that God cares for you. Do you know that as at that time, they called us the big boys in the university because of that phone. I mean, every, every lady that was a lady was whispering about, have you seen Dio's phone? He said his parents got it for him from the United Kingdom. Wow, 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 wow. A Nokia 3210. It was a material thing. There were many, many people that would have been praying, Father, Lord, give me this, give me this. If you should need prove that you love me, give it to me. God, guess what? 25 years down the line, you look back at that Nokia phone. Was it worth it? If they give you that Nokia phone now, will you have a glory spin? That is how material things are. So we don't put our minds on them. Hallelujah. The Bible says they fade. If you carry your mind and put it on material things that, you know, Pastor Seko was teaching and he, he spoke about the greatest house in the 12th century. They showed it on TV. He said to us that if they show that house to you, Lola, now, you will never want to live in it. And kingdoms fought to possess that house. I mean, two cities in the ancient times had a war over that house material things what am i trying to say to you 
Don't use material things to judge if God loves you or doesn't love you. Because they fade away. Cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. What does God want you to do with anxieties? He wants you to cast them on him. What are you doing by casting them on him? You are being a man of faith. You are a man of faith. Is he worrying you? Cast it on him. Okay, Pastor Dio, if I cast it on him, how do I cast it on him? By esteeming Christ in that situation. How do I cast my cares on the Lord? By saying, Lord, I give this to you and I celebrate you for who you are. That's how you cast your cares on him. Not worrying what's going to happen. Oh my God, oh my God. Sometimes what we say we are doing... That we call sometimes. See, when I say cast your cares on the Lord, I'm not saying don't plan. Planning is not worrying. Planning is being specific about the kind of outcome you want to have on something. And Christianity is not against planning. Christianity is not against structure. Christianity is against worry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at, as we conclude tonight, look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 31. How do you worry? How do you take thoughts? How are you someone that can be described as a, as a person with little faith? In fact, let us read verse 25. Luke, uh, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Right? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Say, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? And uh, uh, for your body, what shall we put on? Is not life more than meat? And the body more than raiment? For the fowls of the air, they did not sow, they did not reap, they did not gather into barns. Yet your father feedeth them. Are you not much more than they? Are you listening? Which of you by taking thought... Can add a cubit to his life. Worry never gets you better. Say it with me. Worry never gets me better. Worry has never changed the situation. In the history of worry, nobody has worried to the destination. I mean, there was a problem you worried. In worrying, you got the solution. No. Worry produces nothing but stress and anxiety. Worry was one of the issues with the man called Job. It was worry that made Job a wreck. Worry. He worried about his, ten, his children. People have children. have children. There's a tendency to think, what would they come out to be? What would they? But there is another level where which you are worrying. And you are putting your worry to action. I don't know if God is angry with my children. So let me sacrifice bulls and goats. And he was doing it every day. So that God, if he's angry, he will not kill them. He was worried, 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 worried. And then what happened? Disaster struck. Worry never brings any advantage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at it again. He says in verse 38, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Right? He continues to talk. He says in verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little? Jesus is now about to describe ye of what does little faith mean say contextual reading he just talked about little faith so he's about to tell us what little faith means look at the next verse therefore take no thought little faith means worry in therefore take no thought saying so number say he said oh ye of little faith then he says therefore take no thought so when i'm taking thoughts when i am worrying that is little faith take no thoughts now the next question will be how do i take thoughts how do i become someone who is a person i have developed my faith to be little take no thoughts saying someone says saying what you say how do we know what you're thinking what you say thoughts can come 
Ken Hagin said, a thought can come, a bed can fly over you. But it's your responsibility to ensure that it doesn't drop a poo on your head. Right? It doesn't have to stay there. So thoughts can come, but we don't save them. When we save them, we give them life. He says, take no thought saying. What shall we? How do people take thoughts? How does anxiety bet? Oh my God, what's going to happen? How about this? How about that? Take no thought saying. Hallelujah. What do I do if I don't take thoughts saying? I remember. I esteem Christ. I remember that he loves me and cares for me affectionately. It, it doesn't matter the situation. I don't take thoughts saying, oh, okay, all right. What do I do? I esteem Christ in saying that in the midst of what I'm going through, I understand that God cares for me. Hallelujah. 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 Nothing on the earth will ever happen to you that will be a proof that God hates you. But take no thought saying, because in taking thoughts, you affect your mind. You develop little faith. So, in the midst of a trial, you are worse for it. So, we, so the Bible is trying to say, the Bible is not saying you will never have trials. The Bible is saying, when you have trials, you can be better for it. And the way you are better for it is first, put joy first. Stay in the place of prayer. Stay in the place of the word. Have the community of saints standing with you. Watch what you say. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. Hallelujah. The Christian doesn't need therapy. The Christian needs revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Revelation knowledge. And he humbles himself to it. Someone shout, the word works. Say, the word works. You see, your situation or your circumstance or your experience will never prove that this word doesn't work. Amen? Church, amen? Church, amen? It will never ever prove it. Why? Because there were people. There were people that were... You know, do you know what it means to believe the gospel? And in believing the gospel, it was a signature of your death warrant. People believed the gospel and they were disenfranchised. Oh, you believe the gospel? No, 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 we cannot hire you. That's what was happening in the time. Oh, oh, you believe the gospel? Nobody must talk to this person. Social, social demarcation. Oh, you believe the gospel? Oh, no, 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 no. That was what was going on in this place. And so there was no physical reason. Is it, if you're talking of chief depression, it should be these people. Are you getting my point? If you're talking about chief depression, it should be these people. But God now tells us how to act in the midst. Someone say, in the midst. In the midst. Take no thoughts. Take no thoughts. Say him. What you say. What you say. What you say. Let's conclude with the last scripture and we go tonight. What you say. Remember this. What I want you to take home with you today. God loves you affectionately. Our last scripture for today. James chapter 1. Verse 19. We close with this scripture. James chapter 1. Verse 19. Revelation knowledge. Take it in. That's what you need. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Wherefore, my bread, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Swift to hear. Why? There is a tendency to come to a wrong conclusion if you don't hear well. Be quick to listen. Listen to what? Listen to what God says. Where is what? what did, where did he say it? In messages, in teachings, in the world. Be quick, to, be swift to hear. Because your hearing affects what you believe. What you believe affects your acts. Your act affects your acts. Can we get a believing amen? So can we get a believing amen? Let everyone be what? Swift to hear. And what should you be? Slow to speak. Why are you slow to speak? Because you should not speak before you hear your hearing should lead you to your speaking so you hear about what god has done you hear about the fact that he loves you you hear about that he cares for you don't just come up when you're because in context he's talking about trials don't just have a trial and then all of you say oh where is god where is god no when i'm going through a trial i am hearing the gospel 
I am swift to hear. When I'm going through a tough time, I'm swift to hear. And I'm slow to speak. Why? My mood will want me to say, where is God? My mood will want me to say, it's not happening. My mood will want me to say the wrong things about God. My mood will want me to be angry. Look at it there. Be slow. Be swift to hear. Slow to speak. And what is the last one? Slow to wrath. Slow to anger. How many people have gone through stuff before and then you, 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 you ended up angry? What, why is this happening to me? It says be slow. Rather go back to the beginning. What's the beginning? Quick to hear. Slow to speak. And, what, and slow to anger. Why? Because the anger of man can never bring the righteousness of God. That's the next verse. Then he now tells you to go back. Next verse. He tells you to go back to swift to hear. He says, now lay aside all naughtiness and superfluitiness. And behold the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. He says, see, before the, en the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul, renew your mind. So he's telling you, when you are going through trials, there's a tendency to be angry. He's not saying, you know what, I I there's no, no, we know, you might be, you'll be angry. There's a tendency to talk anyhow. Say, no, 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 calm down. There's a tendency for many of these things. What tendency should you embrace? Be quick to hear. Hallelujah. Be quick to, be quick to hear. Hear about his grace. Hear about his love. When you're going through a tough time, pick out messages. Open the Bible. Hear about his love. Say, I don't feel like reading the Bible at that time. I just felt like, hear. Hear somebody talk about his love. How he loves you so unconditionally. How he cares for you. How he will never leave you nor forsake you. So that you may boldly say. When he was writing to the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew writer, he was writing to the Jews. Who were the Jews? They were in the midst of fiery trials. The Jews were killed. Just like today, if a Muslim says he believes the gospel, you have to get a security guy on the guy because other uh, Muslims wants to kill him for denying the faith. So the person they wrote the book of Hebrews to, they were under threat. That's why he told them. He will never leave you. Meaning many people left them. He will never leave you. Nor forsake you. So that you may boldly say. The Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what men shall do to me. What was the issue? Men hated the Jews for believing the gospel. Men disenfranchised them. So the idea is when I'm going through trials. I go back to the truth. I go back to the gospel. I go back to his grace. I go back to the message that he loves me. I go back to the message that he cares. I go back to the message that he will not leave me. I am not quick to talk. I only talk when I am now convinced of his love. And if I wanted to talk and I'm not yet convinced, I talk myself into being convinced of his love. Hallelujah. You know, it says, don't be quick to get angry. It says, that's what the natural man wants to do. We are not saying you're not a human being. Don't be quick. To get angry. He says, no. No, anything you do in that kind of anger, it will not bring the right result, the righteousness of God. Yeah. You remind, that's why I said, remind yourself that he, he loves you. Be big on the fact that God cares for you. It will develop a kind of confidence in you that you cannot buy anywhere. Be big on the, anywhere you go. Be big on the fact, it's what we call, it is the confidence of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they were told, they are, he said, I'm telling you, bow down or you enter the fire. He said, let me tell you, my friend. He said, we are not careful on this matter. Oh, King, oh, Nebuchadnezzar. See, our Lord will save us. See, but if he will not save us, we are not going to bow down. And then they took these guys into the fiery furnace. The Bible says God showed up there. God showed up there. An angel came there and cooled the place. Be big on the fact that God cares for you. Be big on it. Be big on the fact that God cares for you. If you are the only one, it doesn't matter. He cares. If he touches you, he touches him. He cares. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Believing God cares for you is walking in faith. Talking that God cares for you is walking in faith. If it will not happen for every other person, you say, you know what? As it relates to me, God cares for me. If it concerns me, it concerns him. I won't make a mistake. God cares for me. I will be at the right place at the right time. God cares for me. 
I started here. Don't worry. God cares for me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. God cares for me. I don't handle my cares. I have a department of cares. It is with the most high. He deals with my cares. Why? He loves me. Affectionately. Rise upon your feet this evening. This is another part of the life of faith understanding that god cares for you i want you to lift up your hands wherever it is that you are i want you to declare this truth so strongly i want because it is actually not for god it's for your mind let's keep declaring thank you father because you care for me church everybody boldly we speak out to affect our minds thank you father says thank you father i actually want thank you for see this thing has to hit your mind it has to hit home you have to come to the point that you understand it you understand it you see it as so thank you father i am just i am confident i will boldly say you are with me you care for me i know it as so i am assured as so if i'm in a place and i need that wisdom all i need to do is ask why worry when i can ask oh thank you father thank you father i can actually ask saints you can actually ask you can actually ask it doesn't really matter whatever the situation might be if anyone desires wisdom let him ask of god hallelujah you can actually ask you can actually talk about these things it's a reality hallelujah you can actually ask you can let him ask of god if any man needs wisdom why god cares for him church we are not trying to close the service it's part of the service saint is part of the service that you actually realize that we are talking about our father our father hey i can ask so there is no need to be concerned and be bothered and be troubled ha ah, they were even in the world in the on the sea the bible says water was already entering this the boats and then jesus was in the boat was sleeping and then he they went to jesus and said come and save us you can ask saints jesus stood up and said ah, ah, why worry why are you afraid and he calmed the storm you can ask <laughs> he said oh you have little faith meaning they could actually have done that too but even when you don't think you can do it because you can just ask yeah they asked and the storm was stilled and they found themselves miraculously on the other side said the word of god father we thank you we give you praise in the midst of trials and tribulations we know we have access to your wisdom we give you praise and the glory we thank you because you care for us this is our confidence this is our trust we bless your name in jesus mighty name and the saints say amen and amen god bless you i pray in the name of jesus christ that your hands are steadied in the name of jesus christ you walk in his light in the name of jesus christ you grow ever so surely in his in the confidence in the revelation of his love for you and that brings peace and certainty to your mind hey father we give you praise we give you the glory for righteousness for righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost is the kingdom of god thank you father thank you lord thank you father thank you lord you are with us we give you praise in jesus mighty name and the saints say amen, amen. god bless you richly and have a wonderful wonderful week ahead